Now, if you, like me, in your model making days, cut your teeth on the old Airfix models, and you really like that James May program, he did a thing about toys and was one about Airfix, and the box art of Airfix and how it's become sanitized over the years, that although the box art shows war things like a tank or an airplane, it doesn't show the bullets flying from it like it used to do, and in some cases it doesn't show the swastika. Well, this is a book for you, and you'll really, really enjoy it. If you're the generation that made FX kits, it came out in, in, I'll get to it in a minute, in 1999, hardback with a dust jacket, FX celebrating 50 years of the greatest plastic kits in the world. And it is basically a history of Airfix plastic kits and also the kind of offshoot things they did because Airfix did a lot of um, figures and they did a lot of non-kit things as well. So basically it's a history of the Airfix company from its beginnings right to when it closed. Really good book. Um, what I did like about it is there's loads and loads of colour photographs, not only of box art but of actual models as well. And my, I've made all the Airfix kits over the years and the worst Airfix kit I ever built was the 172 scale, was it 176 scale Panther tank. All the little fiddly suspension bits, a really horrible kit to make. One of the best kits I ever made was the 132 scale Bedford QL Porte with a six pounder gun. That had like a bajillion bits and pieces in it, really good kit that. But also there's mention of prototypes that never made the uh, the the final production. And they had an idea of some things, like for example, they were going to build, well they're going to issue, a series of 132 scale World War II models from famous wartime leaders. And the ones that they actually issued, and you can still buy today, there was Monty's Humber staff car, there was a Dodge Command car, which was Patton's vehicle, there was also a Rommel's half track, but one thing that they did have on the drone board, but they never ever issued, was the Monty's Leyland Retriever caravan, which was, hold on a sec, it was that, 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 that body style, but with a, a box body on the back of it. Now, can you imagine if that, in 132 scale, had hit the shops as a kit, what, what a wonderful opportunity that was, and they've completely wasted it because they never put it into production. An absolute, good selling opportunity masses and masses of potential opportunities for conversion work but they never actually put it into production so they lost out but this is a really good book it goes through some box art <clears throat> the kits the rarest kits the massive ferguson tractor that they started off with so we'll put this on the chair and we'll have a look through it because it is well worth the money <clears throat> when i bought this i think it was 20 quid through the military and aviation book club don't know how much you'll pay for it now. They're all hardbacks. They've all got dust jackets. But it is well worth the money if you were into Airfix kits the first time round or the second time round. Because nowadays, a lot of the Airfix kits no longer produced. A lot of them have been taken over by other companies. A lot of them are now manufactured by Revel. And they're like six times the price of what they were when I was making them. And um, that kind of puts you off doing them. So we'll put it on the chair. We'll have a look through it because it, it is worth searching out for, for nostalgia purposes. So this is <clears throat> Airfix celebrating 50 years of the greatest plastic kits in the world. <clears throat> and how many of them there do you recognize? I think I've built some of the ships that one there was a big model of the Bentley, which we could never afford because you could motorise that, but it was very expensive. That was the expensive big Stuka, which I never built. I, built. I remember building the Spitfire. I built a few of the ships, a few of the aeroplanes, big Messerschmitt, which I built that. The B, the classic B-type bus, I built a few of them in my time. The 132 Crusader tank. Never actually built that one. That's the Rommel's half track. I built a couple of them, the old fire engines. I built quite a lot of the the 132 scale classic vintage cars. 
I've built all of these, the Lancers, the Waterloo things, built them. The Maserati, I built that. The classic half track with the trailer, built that, built that. The refueling set, built that. Leopard tank, I've built that. The T-34, never built that. The RAF emergency set, I've built many of them. World War One tank, I've built loads of them. And I can remember back in the 1990s, there was a market stall in the town near me, and a guy had a few hundred of these on his stall in the old blister pack, the card pack with the uh, plastic cover. 50 pence each, he was selling them off for, and I bought the lot. Emergency set, the Airfix Duck, never built that one. There it is, the Panther tank. Really, really horrible vehicle that to make, by Airfix anyway. Chieftain tank, I built them. Can't say that I've built any of these modern cars or the Mini. Built that one, the classic Monty's Humber, built that one, I've built a few of them. I never built that one though, the packet. But yeah, I bet you lot have built a few of them as well. So, this is what it contents. And that is the rarest one, 1949. That, that was intended as a as a, uh, a salesman's piece that he would take around the factories. Now a very rare model. It goes through the early production bags. All the pre-production stuff. How plastic kits came of age. Then it starts with Airfix and as you can see Airfix did a lot of stuff. These are the Ferguson tractors that they made. Then you go into the ships. I don't. I don't think they're in years of uh, production. The first with the last. I think it's just it goes through. I've built quite a lot of them in my time. And the old railway accessory bits, which are, I think Dapol took over the moulds from them. You can still buy them brand new. The line side kits by Afix. The old Airfix magazine, I used to get that. As I said, that's, I've built a few of them, the B-17 Flying Fortress. That's a really good model to make that. Really spectacular, really large model. That's the big scale Spitfire, I've built one of them. The astronauts, I remember having them. There we are, the Monty's Humber. Then they did some 132 scale hard plastic things, the Bedford RL. I've had a few of them. Here's the 132 scale stuff. 17 pounder gun, built that. M3 Lee, never built that. Crusader, never built that. Rommel's half track, never built that. The Grant, never built that. The classic Monty's Humber, built quite a lot of them. German e boat never built that. Rescue launch, I think I built one of them. And you've got all the figures, I've had all them figures in various boxes over the years. Liners, never built those. I've built a few ships. These are the hard plastic ones, 132 scale. I've got one of those upstairs. I've got one of those, the Daimler Scout car. I've had that one, I haven't had that one, I've had a few stalwarts. It's just a shame that they never did, they did, I don't think they did any of them as kits, which is a shame, because had, had they made these as kits in 132 scale, they would have been best sellers, but they only ever made them in hard plastic. And there's the classic double O gauge stuff. I've never built the Stug by Airfix, I've built many a Sherman tank, the, the, the tracks on the Sherman tank used to rot. Tiger tank, never been impressed by that one. Probably the easiest AFX model to build. The really tiny Bren carrier that came with the six pounder. I've built a few of them, really good model that. I've built a few of them. The Matador 5.5 inch gun, built loads of them. Stalin tank, I've never built the Stalin tank. So 
it's a re it's a really really good nostalgia trip that's the big 1930 Bentley that you could <clears throat> put a motor in it and you could adapt it to radio control it was a massive model but it was expensive never had one of them I've built a few of these figures really nice box art bits and pieces and pre-production artwork and again you see if, if that was the box art of an airfix kit now it wouldn't have the explosion on the deck of the ship they're classic now how many people watching this have actually converted them into canvas back trucks i know i have over the years some of the older ones that went out of production and they never reintroduced them the sunbeam wrap yeah never built that one i think the only the only car i ever built a few a few years ago they did the uh was it the ford escort the uh the the tr6 something in a, in a pack of four cars and i built all of them and i think the only <clears throat> first time round airfix car that i built apart from the vintage stuff was they did a Mark III Ford Zephyr, didn't they? Or a Zodiac or something like that. They issued it as a custom car and I built them. These are the other hard plastic ones in 176 scale. I've had quite a lot of them over the years. They used to issue them in uh, battle sets as well, which I've done a few videos of a couple of battle sets and you've probably seen them in the, in the classic World War One tank. Built quite a lot of them over the years. Never had the odd job set. I had one of them Deltics, but it was a Dapol reissue. There's a trackside accessory, which you can still buy them brand new today. There's the classic FN rifle, which I did a video of that. I've got one of those. So I do have a video of one of them. Airfix Low Mac. You can buy these now. Airfix did them as a set, the Transporter and the JCB. Well now Dapol, or whoever's taken Dapol over, issue that and that as separate models, so you have to buy the two separately now. The diving submarine, I've had one of those. You can you open the plug and you put in a little like an Alka Seltzer type tablet and it dove and came up again. Really good that one. The combat pack, I had one of those, but my combat pack had a Panzer IV tank. And the Daimler Scout car. And what you had, you had these pillboxes. The pillbox doors opened on the top, and you put little plastic discs in. And when you pulled the lever back, that's 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 a lever on the back of it there. You put the plastic discs 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 in the open door there. And then when you pulled that back, it fired the disc out through the front there. As that kid's doing there, pulled it back, the disc went flying and knocked all your soldiers over. And you had in the combat pack, you had some packets of soldiers, you had some cardboard buildings. But I had that, but not that particular set. Mine was the Panzer IV and, and uh, a Daimler car, scout car. So that's unusual. And then we carry on, we have the railway stuff, which I built a couple of them. Mainly I did the saddle tank loco. And then the classic Roman fort, I've had a few of them. Gun emplacement, I've had a few of them. Never had the Wild West thing. Never had, never ever seen that one. The Battle of Waterloo assault set. I know they did the, the farm on its own. But I've never seen that one available. Then the coastal artillery thing, which I've built a few of those. Then you go on to the other stuff that Airfix did. Did these Eagles adventure sets, which were articulated figures. Then the, the completely stupid and pointless flight deck. Now flight deck was a piece of shit. What you had, you had two lengths of cardboard which made up this flight deck. And what it was, your phantom jet had a hole in the top of it there. And you had a length of fishing wire which went through to the top of that control lever. So you had it fastened to the control lever. Your length of fishing wire went down through the top of the airplane and up attached to a high point like a shelf and what you did was you fired 
the, the phantom and it, it flew up the wire. When it got to a certain point, it turned around and it came back down again and you had to push this lever forward to drop, to droop the wire, which, which in inverted commas landed the aircraft on the cardboard. What a heap of crap that was and I had one of those. And you have all the other ones that went into space with the snap fix stuff. I don't remember building them. I built the, the dinosaurs were absolutely fantastic. I built them in my time. They were brilliant. Then, ah, there's the one I had. The customised Mark, Mark III Zodiac. I had that model. I think I paid 150 for it. Never had the Capri. Never did the Star Wars stuff. Wish I did. Wish I'd kept some. Wish I'd bought some. Then they went in the Dukes of Hazard stuff. Then the different style of boxes. Angel Interceptor. I built a couple of them. And they started doing collector's packs. Then they had the classic double R scale soldiers. I've had masses and masses of these. The gun emplacement. The crane. So yes, yeah, so it's a really, really good look at the old airfix stuff and it's just a shame they didn't do that monty's uh, caravan the leyland retriever truck but yeah and as the blurb says only a very sad minority of men aged 30 to 50 did not make airfix kits when they were boys this book enables the rest of us to relive the glory days of our plastic air forces, navies or tank fleets. Superbly executed studio photographs show all the obscure and highly collectible kits as well as the best sellers with illustrations of the packets, box art, adverts in 1960s and 70s magazines and a massive period ephemera. For anyone who's ever watched an Airfix Messerschmitt plummet to its fiery doom from the bedroom window, Airfix recaptures the magic of the modelling world. And I can't argue with that. It is absolutely brilliant. It's just a shame now that the Airfix stuff, as good as the nostalgia is, they're now not very good kits. They've been pulled and pulled that many times from molds that they lose a lot of detail and they're very, very expensive nowadays. You know, they're just not worth bothering with now, unfortunately. But there it is. But it is a really good book to try and source.